Hello, I'm Chris Vine, author of the Peters Railway series of books. As you can see, they are very much based on a real railway, and today I'm going to read you one of my stories, The Picnic. I hope you enjoy it. The Picnic Grandpa was driving the small steam train down the line to Woodland Cottage. Grandma was riding in her special saloon carriage. She was going out to the cinema later with Peter's mum and dad. Peter and the twins, Kitty and Harry, were staying at home with Grandpa. Grandma and Mum gave him lots of instructions. There's a beef stew. Don't forget to heat it up. Make sure they're all in bed by seven o'clock. Get them to brush their teeth. They were still giving poor Grandpa his instructions as they drove off down the road. Grandpa, however, had his own ideas on how to entertain children. When they had gone, he went into the kitchen to start cooking dinner. Through the window, he could see the children playing on the railway. Peter was filling the tender of fiery fox with water, while Harry was pushing Kitty along the line in a coal wagon. Grandpa didn't know much about cooking, but heating up the beef stew was easy enough. He could put jacket potatoes in the oven at the same time, but what else would go with it? I know, he thought to himself, I'll boil up some cabbage and Brussels sprouts. That will make a really healthy meal. It never occurred to him that the children might not like cabbage and sprouts. Dinner time, he called out of the window, and I've got an easy question for you. Would you like to eat in the boring old kitchen, he asked them, or would it be more fun to go for a picnic on the train? Picnic, 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 everyone shouted. So they carried all the food and drink outside and loaded it onto the wagons. Can we have the picnic by the river at the waterfall, asked Peter. Of course we can, replied Grandpa, laughing. Jump on quickly and let's go while the food's still hot. I'll drive the train, he continued, then you can all enjoy the ride and think about how hungry you are. When they were all aboard, Grandpa climbed onto the locomotive and checked the boiler. The water level was fine and the fire was burning bright and hot. He gave a toot on the whistle and cracked open the steam regulator. With a few wheezes and chuffs, Fiery Fox eased slowly out of the little station, clouds of white steam pouring from her chimney. It was a pretty run on the railway with the first part of the line running through the orchard behind the house. After that, the railway went through a field and ran along beside the River Woe. Faster, Grandpa, faster, shouted the twins. Grandpa opened the regulator further and Fiery Fox raced across the field. The children laughed as their hair blew back in the wind. Now they could see the waterfall in the distance and Grandpa started to slow down. He stopped right beside the watermill which they had built last summer. It was turning quietly, generating electricity to power the house and farm. With the water rushing over the rocks, and dry grass to sit on, it was the perfect place for a picnic. The sun was low in the sky, and they tucked into the food like hungry lions. They all started with a plate stacked high with beef stew, baked potatoes, cabbage, and Brussels sprouts. It was so much fun eating outside that Peter and the twins completely forgot that they didn't like cabbage and sprouts. They just ate everything. More cabbage, please, Grandpa, shouted Harry. More sprouts, please, Grandpa, shouted Kitty. More of everything, sang out Peter. Grandpa piled their plates up again, and the party fell silent while they demolished every last scrap of food. When they were finished, Grandpa told them about steam engine drivers in the old days. If the train was stopped for a long time at a red signal, he began, the driver and farmer could cook up a really good breakfast in the cab. They would heat the coal shovel by holding it in the flames in the firebox, he explained. Then they would take it out, wipe it clean, and add some cooking fat and sausages, or bacon and eggs. Then they would hold the shovel back in the firebox until breakfast was cooked to perfection. Grandpa chuckled, I've got some mini sausages here, let's cook them in Fiery Fox. They were the best sausages they had ever tasted, apart from the one that fell into the fire. It was nearly time to drive the engine back home, but first, Grandpa had some work to do. I've dropped some logs for your dad to burn on the fire, he explained. We'll go round the line to Bluebell Wood, load them onto the train, and deliver them to Woodland Cottage. By the time they stopped, it was after nine o'clock and almost dark. Oh dear, muttered Grandpa. Quick, everyone, run inside and jump into bed. Don't worry about changing into your pyjamas. Just be in bed before Mum gets home. If she finds you still up and about, I shall be in big trouble again, he added, smiling. Next day, late in the afternoon, the children were upstairs in Peter's room playing trains. Mum was downstairs cooking dinner for her young family. 
Tonight it was sausages again, their favourite, and cabbage and sprouts, not so favourite, or so she thought. Dinner's ready, she called out, but just then the doorbell rang and she went to see who it was. When she came back, there was no sign of the children, but the food had disappeared. All was quiet in the house until a peculiar noise started coming down through the ceiling. A whirring, rumbling and giggling sort of noise. Mum went up to investigate. Very quietly she opened the door a little and peeked inside. Nobody noticed so she just watched. A sausage was going round on a small wagon on the model railway. Then a sprout whizzed past. Another sausage please Peter called Harry as he drove his engine and empty trucks round the line to his brother. Peter, who had all the plates, put a sausage on the little train and Harry drove it back and ate it quickly, laughing. Kitty's train was on the inner circuit and it was loaded up with a full meal. She was driving it round and round, picking things off to eat as it went past. Very tricky with the cabbage. I'm thirsty, shouted Harry above the din. Can you send over the milk train, Peter? Mum could hardly believe her eyes as a small shunting locomotive pulled a long tanker wagon out of a siding. It clanked round the line and stopped in front of the three children. Opening the milk tanks, announced Peter as he pulled off their tiny lids. Drink up, shouted Kitty, and they each put a straw into the hole in the top. A few seconds later, there were funny sucking noises and it was all gone. Cabbage please this time, called Harry. More sprouts please, yelled Kitty. Peter loaded them up and off they went. Poor mum. She had always struggled to get them to eat healthy vegetables and now they were wolfing them down like there was no tomorrow. Then suddenly, disaster. While no one was looking, Harry switched some points and diverted his train onto Kitty's line. Smash! The two trains collided head on and food went everywhere. One engine got buried in cabbage, the other got stuck on a sausage. Oh dear, what a mess. This was going to take a lot of clearing up. Mum sighed quietly and shut the door. Whatever would they get up to next? The end. Thank you for listening. Uh, what we're going to do later is to recreate some parts of the story with the real engine and the railway. So I hope you enjoy that too. So here we are, cooking sausages in Bongo's fire box, or fiery fox in the books. There they go, into the fire hole door. Leave them in there for a few minutes. Right, I think that's the timer gone. The steam sausage timer. Right, let's check these sausages. Right, they come. Oh, they look perfect. Smoking, hot, wonderful sausages. Here we go. Right, Peter, would you like to try a sausage cooked in Fiery Fox? Yes. Mmm. Those are perfect. Mmm. That's very good.